Okay, welcome to the first tutorial in the iGame series. This first game that we are going to create today is going to be the chase game. Uh, the point of this game is to have your character controlled by the arrow keys chasing around another player on the screen. So, once you have Scratch downloaded, you can go ahead and open it up and this is the first screen that you're going to see. This is going to be the home screen of Scratch. If you look over here along the left hand side, you have the different sections in the coding tab. These correspond to different actions that you can have your character to do. There's the motion tab, looks tab, sound tab, events, controls, sensing, and we're probably only going to get to variables uh, for the sake of these tutorials. So the first thing that we are going to do for this game is go ahead and select our player sprite down here. It's going to default to this cat here. Um, you're welcome to go ahead and change that if you'd like to do so. You're going to click down here. It says choose a sprite. Click on that. It'll open this box up. You can choose whatever you would like to be your character in this game and you can always go back and change this later if it's something that you don't want. So for mine, I'm going to choose this bear here. Now, once I do this, you'll see I have two characters on the screen. One is a bear and one is a cat. To go ahead and delete one, you can click back on it and click the little delete box that pops up in the top right of your character down here. So, now that we have the character that we want, we're going to go ahead and start programming it. For the first set of program, we are going to go over into the events tab. And you see this block that says when space key pressed. We're going to go ahead and drag this over here into our coding block. However, we want to be able to use the arrow keys and it currently says the space key. In order to change that, we'll click the drop down and choose up arrow. So it'll say when up arrow key pressed. Now, when we push the up arrow, we want our player to move up. So we're going to go back to the motion tab. We are going to find the one that says change Y by 10. We're going to click that, drag it in, and it'll sort of have this little shadow under it. That's what you want. You're going to go ahead and drag that up and drop it in. So now it says when up arrow key pressed, change Y by 10. So now we have the up arrow programmed. We still have three other arrow keys that we need to program. So, we'll go back to the events tab again, when space key pressed, drag it out. We're going to change space key this time to the right arrow. Once we've done that, back to the motion tab, change X by 10 this time because we want it to change in the X direction. Click and drag that up. Now we're going to do the same thing for the down arrow and the left arrow. Back to the events tab, when space key pressed, change space key to down arrow. Back to the motion tab. This time we're going to do change Y by 10. But you'll notice that we now have the up arrow and the down arrow changing Y by 10. Well, those would pretty much do the same thing, which we don't want to happen. We want the down arrow to move our player in the downwards direction. So we'll click in the box here, click the backspace button or the delete key on our keyboard, and change this to minus 10, negative 10. So it's going to move in the negative y direction. Lastly, we need to do the same thing now for the left arrow key events tab, when space key pressed, change this to the left arrow key, back to the motion tab, change X by 10, we'll drag that in, and just like we did for the down arrow, we now need to change the left arrow key to negative 10 as well, so that way it moves in the left direction. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and test what you currently have by clicking the flag up here, the green flag that says go. Once you click that, you can test your arrow keys and make sure that they all move in the correct direction. If they don't, 
go ahead and pause the video and check over your programming and compare it with what I have on the screen here. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us. So, the next thing that we are going to do in this game is we need to change the background so we can have something fun. In order to do that, we'll go to the bottom right of the screen, choose a background, and you can choose anything that you'd like in here. There's a whole lot if you continue to scroll down. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and just go with the blue sky background here. There we go. Now we have a background on it. Now we are going to create a new sprite in order to have what we are going to chase around the screen. In order to do that, we're going to click down here on the Choose a Sprite button. You can choose anything you'd like again, and remember you can always go back and change these. I'm going to choose this beetle here. And I'm just going to click and drag him and put him somewhere else on the screen. Once you have done that, you'll notice that you have two sprites down here. You have no programming in this window when the beetle is selected, and when your previous player is selected, you have the programming that we just did. We want to make sure that the character that we just placed in here is selected for this next set of programming. So for me, I'm going to click back on the beetle. Yours may be something different, and it should show up blank here. Our first set of programming for the beetle is going to be under the events tab. We're going to click and drag the when green flag is clicked and place it in here. That's going to correspond to this green flag. So what it's saying is when you start the game, it's going to run the programming that we place under here. After that, we're going to click down on the control tab and take this forever loop here. What a forever loop does is any programming that you place inside of it is it's going to continuously repeat it forever instead of just running through one time. So anytime you want to make something kind of go for the life of the game, you'll use a forever loop. Inside of our forever loop, we are going to tell the beetle to glide for 10 seconds. In order to do that, you are going to go to the motion tab and come down here to glide one second in the random position. Click and drag that inside of our forever loop. Now, when you click the green flag, he's going to move around the screen slowly, which is exactly what we want. So, to stop it, you can go ahead and hit the stop sign here. And we are going to go on to the next part. So, at any time, you can always click and drag and move your characters on the screen. Okay. So next, we're going to make a score variable for our game. We're going to select the variables tab down here. We're going to select make a variable. It's going to come up with this screen. It's going to ask you to name your variable. Ours is going to be score, since we are wanting to add a score counter to our game. You want to make sure that for all sprites is selected, and then click OK. So, you'll notice now that we have a new score variable that we have made in here. So, the last thing that we are going to do is select our original character again. Mine was the bear. You should see this original programming that we did early on in the tutorial. We are going to create a new block of coding now that's separate from this, which can go anywhere inside of this empty area. We are going to go back to the events tab when green flag is clicked, place it in here, down to the variables tab, we are going to set my variable to zero. Now you'll notice it says my variable, however we just created one called score. To change that we'll click on the drop down and click score. So we're going to set the score to zero. And if it's done correctly, you'll notice in the top left of our game, it says score zero. We are now going to use another forever loop. To get to there, we are going to go to the control tab and drag our forever loop. 
once we have a forever loop in here, we're going to use the if blank then. That's going to go inside of our forever loop. So it's going to be sort of like a cheeseburger here with meat in the middle. We're going to go to our sensing tab. The very top one says touching mouse pointer. We're going to click and drag that in between the if and the in. So it will not be inside of here. That should still be empty. It's going to go between if and then. Now, we don't want it touching our mouse pointer. We want it to be touching whatever the name of our second character is. In my case, it's the beetle. So I'm going to click the drop down and click on the beetle. Now, every time it does this, we want it to make a sound and increase the score by one point. To do so, I'm going to go to sound. I'm going to go to play sound, pop until done, click and drag that inside of our if then statement. And the last thing that we're going to do is go to the variables tab. We're going to go change my variable by one. That will go below play sound, but still inside of our if then statement. And just like we did last time, we created the variable score, so we want to make sure that's the one we're using. We're going to click on my variable and change it to score. So now that we have this programming done, it's time to test our game. To do that, I'm going to click on the green flag up here. It's going to play that sound every time it touches our character, and the score is going to increase by one. So we can move our character around the screen and try to touch the beetle and see what high score we can get. To quit it, you're just going to click on the stop button here. That's all for this tutorial, and we'll see you on the next one.